Welcome to Lomax Temple Online Worship Experience. We're so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship on this first Sunday in June. Today's scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 6, from verses 10 through 17. The title is, Oh, It's Time to Battle. We now will have scripture reading from Sister Kim Curry-Smith, followed by a pre-recorded selection from our Low Max Simple Choir. I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17 out of the NIV. I'm Sister Kim Curry-Smith. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the black breastplate, excuse me, of righteousness in place, and with your feet filled with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.
Good morning, Lomax. And good morning, family who are viewing us at this time. We're so glad that you paused to be part of our service. We know we have a lot of things happening in our world, but stop, God is still yet in control. I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I want us to look at verse number 11. This is the key verse. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 11. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. I just want to just let you know, it's time for us to stand and it's time for us to battle. Oh, it's time for us to stand and it's time for us to battle. Let us pray. Oh, God, we thank you for your goodness and for your grace. Lord, we need you right now, each and every last one of us, oh, God. Oh, God, I yield myself to you. Give me words to say to your wonderful people. Guide me, oh, God. Use my mind, my my tongue, my heart to speak your oracles of life. And, oh God, I pray for those who hear your word that will fall on good soil, that ears will hear, minds will understand, hearts will receive, and bodies and limbs will be ready to do what thus says you, oh God. I thank you right now so let the meditation of my heart and everything about me in this message truly be acceptable to you, O God, in thy sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's, it's time to take a stand. Oh, it's time to battle. See, I was part of the military force that went to Iraq back in 1990. And I remember them saying this next day, here is what we're going to do in this particular hour that we are going to be moving into Kuwait. See, it's, it's time to gear up. It's time to battle. With all the things that is happening in our land, it is time for us to stand. We have to stand for Javar Harrell that lost his life here in Detroit. We have to stand for Ahmad Aubrey. It's time for us to stand. We have to stand for Brianna Taylor. Oh, it's time for us to take a stand. We have to stand for George Floyd. It's, it's time for us to take a stand. Black men and black women in this this nation is losing their lives for unjust cause. So it's time for us to put on the whole armor of God. Oh, it's time for us to gear up. Oh, it's time for us to battle. Oh, it's not the battle that you think I may be talking about, but God is calling us to put on the full armor of of God in order that we might be able to stand. Oh, our president wants to dominate peaceful protesters using pepper spray, using rubber bullets in order to walk across the street to take a picture in front of the church. Oh, it's time for us to put on the full armor of God. It's, it's time for us to stand. Oh, COVID-19 is still yet the pandemic that is happening and impacting our people across the land. It's still making hits in our communities. Oh, it's time for us to put on the full armor of God. It's time for us to make 
a stand, understanding that unemployment is hovering around its all times high. And God is saying it's time for us to put on the full armor of God. It's time for us to battle. It's time for us to gear up. But we have to understand who our enemy is. See, some folks may believe that our enemy might be bad police officers, but that's not our enemy. Our enemy may, some folks may say it's because that drugs has infested our neighborhood, but that's truly not our enemies. The, the enemies may, some folks may say it's the violence that's happening in our neighborhoods, but I'm here to tell you that that's not our enemy. The enemy, some folks may say it's absentee fathers, but I'm here to tell you that's not our enemy. The enemy, some folks may say, is racism, but I'm here to tell you that that's not our enemy. Some folks may say the enemy is mass incarceration of black and brown people, but I'm here to tell you that that's not our enemy. Some folks may say, oh, it's corrupt politicians that's our true enemy, but I'm here to tell you that that's not our enemy. Some folks may say it's wayward churches and wayward leadership in the church, but I'm here to tell you that's not our enemy. Oh, those are merely symptoms and influenced by the real enemy. See, we must understand who our enemy is. We have to know the enemy's strengths we have to know our enemy's weaknesses. In order for us to defeat the enemy that comes up against us, we need to know who they are. We need to know who the true enemy is, not the symptoms and the influence of the enemy, but we need to know who our enemy is. See, we want to be able to sidestep our enemy and hit him with the full strength in the midst of his weakness. Our enemy is not what people mention or not what I mentioned earlier because those are only symptoms of the influence of the enemy. See, understanding we got to know who our enemy is and we got to be ready to go after the enemy that truly is our, our enemy. See, we got to know who he is. See, when verse 12, it lets you know. It says it lets you know who our enemy is. It, we got to understand who our enemy is because we'll never win a battle if we don't know who our enemy is. We'll never win the fight if we don't know who our enemy is. We will never win the war that we continue to struggle with if we don't understand who our enemy is. When we look at verse 12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We not to understand it's not the people. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against rulers. It's, it's against authorities. It's against the power of darkness of this world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. See, see, our enemy understand that he, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In order for us to defeat our enemy, we must strategize and our enemy. We have to know what the strategy is as it relates to being able to defeat our enemy. I was watching the war room this past weekend, and, 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 and one of the things that it says, I, I love this, this movie, is, and what sort of sticks out to me is when Miss Clara says this in the beginning of the movie. She says, victories don't come by accident. See, we got to understand who our enemy is. We got to know who our enemy is in order for us to defeat our enemies because we won't be able to win by accidental win because they're out to, to steal, kill, and destroy. We need to know who our enemy is. His, his name is Lucifer. His, his name who is a fallen angel. Oh, he's called and described a few different ways. He's the father of lies. He's the evil one. He's the tempter. He's the thief. He's the adversary. He's the murderer. He, his mission is to only distract us and get us sidetracked on really what the enemy truly is trying to do. He's trying to discourage us in a way to make us to give up. He's trying to divide us and we see that in our nation as we're trying to come apart from one another. He's trying to deceive us. You have to understand he's always trying to deceive us. We got to know he's trying to cause doubt in our heart and he's trying to destroy us. 
because we who need to know who God is and who we are in God. See, understand that we must understand this battlefield that we're about to get on, this battlefield that we're coming to. We have to understand that we have to go to the battlefield. We can't get around it. We must be willing to go to the battlefield. We can't run from the battlefield, but we must engage in the battlefield. But we just don't do that like any other folks. We can't be scared with, because we know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he given us a power and of love and a sound mind. We got to understand that what God has given to us so we can't be afraid to go to the battlefield. We got to know who our enemy is and we got to be willing to go to the battlefield. God informs us that we need to be strong and courageous like he did with Joshua back in the day because he's about to do some great things in our lives. But we have to be strong and courageous because we serve a God who will never leave nor shall he ever forsake us. But the thing about it is we got to be willing to go to the battlefield, and knowing that we're going not in any kind of way, but we're going in a certain way that God has instructed us in order for us to go. He says, you got to put on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand against the schemes of this enemy. See, we got to, it's battle time, and we got to realize that it truly is battle time. God tells us that finally, be strong in the Lord. We got to be strong and courageous. We got to be strong in power. It says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. See, in verse 10, it tells us that when we are unstrong with the Lord, we can able to walk in his mighty power. Ain't that good news to know that we can walk in God's mighty power, that we are able to defeat the enemy that's trying to tear us apart, that we can go to the battlefield when we're truly equipping ourselves and what God is instructing us to do. In verse 11, he says, put on the full armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the devil's scheme. We got to realize on who we're battling. We're not just battling flesh and blood, but we're battling against this thing, this evil one, this the one who's tempter, this one who's trying to destroy us. See, we got to be strong in the Lord. We got to hold on to his unchanging hand. We got to realize that there's nothing that is too hard for God, nothing. Oh, I know what it looks like. I know what it seems like. I know when we see all the news, but we got to realize that it's still yet nothing too hard for God. When we look at this text, it informs us that the time, the battle is right now. See, we got to be strong in the Lord. We got to put on the full armor of God. Oh, it's time to battle. And when I was in the military, one of the things that we would have to do is have some equipment that we would have to put on. We would have to put on a helmet. We have to put on a flak jacket. We have to put on a utility belt. We have to put on a gas mask. We would have to put on our boots. We would have to have our M16 and maybe a sidearm by our side that we might be able to engage in battle. See, that was our full armor of, of, of what the U.S. Army had given unto us. And God is saying this, guess what? There's some stuff you're going to have to put on because it's battle time. It's time for us to stand and to fight. See, here's how we got to do it. We, like I was talking about earlier, what the military has us put on, God is saying, here's what I need you to do. You got to stand. You got to stand. He didn't even say you got to fight, but you got to stand. You got to go to the battlefield. You got to do these things. You got to, uh, you cannot be fearful or running from the battle, but you got to be able to stand where you're going to. See, understanding in, in verse, and he tells us, he's put on the, the, the belt of truth around your waist. Put the belt of truth on. 
See, this, this belt of truth is, is reminding us that we got to trust in God's word. We got to believe in God's promises, knowing that God's word is truly the lamp until our feet. We got to trust in God's word. We putting on the belt of truth around our waist. Oh, it's not going to get loose. It's not going to fall off. Nothing is going to keep me from knowing and holding on to the truth of God. We hold on to everything and believe everything that the word of God is saying into our lives. We won't get rattled by it, but we are hold on to God's word. We are having it wrapped around us and saying that this is the belt of truth and nothing will let make us let this truth go. And secondly, we got to hold on to say it's the breastplate. We got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. We got to put the breast, breastplate of righteousness on. And see, that's to guard our heart. That's to guard our heart. We, we want to walk in righteousness. We want to talk in righteousness. We want to do what God is asking us to do. We want to do nothing that's contrary to what God is asking us to do. We want to love folks in righteousness. We don't want to walk in sin. We got to realize God created in me a clean heart and a renewed spirit because I don't want to keep doing the same old things over and over and over and over again. God is saying you got to love your neighbor with, with, with love your neighbor as you love him. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, God is inquiring us to, to continue to trust in him, continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. See, God is our savior and we got to hold on to him. We got to walk in this righteousness and realize that God is telling us this now unto him who's able to keep us from stumbling that we can walk in such a way that he can continue to clean our hearts up. And, and thirdly, we, we, there's some other stuff we got to put on. See, because we just can't walk out there half-dressed. See, the thing about it, a lot of us been walking out half-dressed. The thing about it is God has told us to put on the whole armor of God. And here's the thing, we can't take it off. See, we can't just put it on sometime. Put on the shoes sometime. Put on the breastplate sometime. Put on the word sometime. But he, he's saying you got to put the whole armor of God on and don't take it off. So other side, it says, it says well, now we need to know we got to put on the, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and we have to put the shoes on fitted for readiness. See, we got to put our marching boots on. We got to put our walking boots on. Even in the midst of this protest, there's some times we're going to have to do some walking and some marching and making sure we're standing for justice. See, yesterday or a day before yesterday, on what day was that? On Thursday, we went, was it Thursday? I'm, I'm asking my wife because she's the only one here here now. So it was on Thursday we went marching for the part of letting people know about the injustices that was taking place. So sometimes we're going to have to march. So sometimes we're going to have to stand. And sometimes we are going to have to protest. See, we must speak truth to power. We, we still have to do this. We, we can't turn our back. We got to be ready to speak truth to power. But God in this was telling us that we got to have our shoes ready that to tell about his excellence, tell about God's goodness, tell about his greatness, telling folks that if you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. We got to tell folks in this world that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save it. We got to be ready to walk around to tell people about the goodness of God. See, he says you got to put on the shoes of readiness. Oh, it's time to go to battle, but you got to begin to tell folks about my goodness and my greatness. If you have your shoes on, you got to be willing to walk and to tell others about my goodness. And then we have to put the shield of faith. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. See, we got to put our faith on. We got to put the shield of faith on. We have to continue to believe in what God is saying. See, see, we have to have the faith 
of God. If what he said he can do, he will be able to do. We got to be just like those three boys back in, in, in that day when they was being thrown in the fire. We have to realize and just say, guess what? I know my God can save me, and even if he don't, it's all right. We got to have the faith of saying, I don't care where you put me, even though it might be a little hot, it might seem like a fire, but I know my God can save me because I've seen him do it before, over and over again. So my faith won't rattle. My faith won't change. I will still continue to trust in a God who's able to do wonderful and miraculous things. I got to be like the woman who said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to make my way because I have faith that I know who he is. I know what he's done. But if I could just make my way unto him, I could just touch the hem of his garment and everything will be all right. I got to have faith that's mustard seed size type faith that I know that I can speak to a mountain. I can speak to my situation. I can speak to things that's causing me trouble because the word says nothing is impossible for us when we're trusting in God. So we got to put on the shield of faith. And then it says, in order that we may extinguish the flaming arrows of the, of the evil one coming at us. See, when we have faith, when he tries to shoot something at us, when he tries to shoot that doubt at us, when he tries to shoot something that's like so that's not moving fast enough, we can still trust in the word of God. We can still say, I know my God can move mountains. I know my God can part red seas. I know my God can knock down walls. I know my God can make a way out of no way. I know what you're trying to tell me, evil one. I know what you're trying to tell me, the one who's a tempter. I know because you are the father of lies and I won't believe anything that you say because I will always trust in the Lord so I will keep my shield of faith and my faith will not be rattled see we got to continue to hold on to what God is saying to us and fifthly we have to have the helmet of salvation helmet of salvation see the Lord we Lord just keep my mind Keep my mind stayed on thee. God, my mind, my heart, my thoughts, help me not to get so caught up and so angry and so frustrated that I end up doing something that saying something that I shouldn't have done. I don't go and do something that may cause others harm. I, I want to be a Lord. I, I might be angry, but help me to sin not. Help me to keep my righteous mind, oh God, and stayed on thee. Oh Lord, I know that the enemy is trying to mess my thoughts up, cause me to have fear and cause me to have doubt and cause me to have some crazy thoughts. But I know I serve a God who's able to keep me in my right mind. So I'm putting on the helmet of salvation that I will trust in him with all my heart, with all my mind. And I will not lean to even my own understanding, but in all my ways, I will acknowledge you. See, that's what we're trying to get to. If I put on the whole armor, God, I can't take it off right now. I got to put on the, bre the belt of truth. I got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. I got to put on the shoes ready for fitness. I got to put on the shield of faith. I have to put on the helmet of salvation. And then it says, guess what? You got to have some weapons. I have to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. See, the sword is my weapon of choice. The sword, the Holy Bible, is the weapon of choice. See, God says you got to go to the battlefield, but all you got to do is stand. Stand equipped in him totally. When I put on and hold on to this sword, of truth is the word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto 
my path. The word through the work of the Holy Spirit begins to cleanse me and to make me and to mold me and to transform my life. The word of God is so powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword for it has the, the power to pierce even and divide souls and spirit. It turns our heart and moves us in a such a way. The, the word gives our soul strength. The word is able to save us. The word is God. And in the beginning, and John, it says, and the word was, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was the beginning of God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of of men, but it, don't stop there. When you slide down to verse 14, it says, The word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of his one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, it's time for battle. It's time for us to put on the whole armor of God, not just part of it, but the whole armor of God. You got to put on the belt of truth because you got to be holding on to what God is saying. Oh, you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness because you want to walk the way God has orchestrated your life. Yo, you got to put on the shoes fitted for readiness because I'm going to tell some folks about his goodness and his grace. Oh, I got to put on the shield of faith because nothing is going to rattle me. Nothing is going to distract me because I will continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Oh, I got to put on the helmet of salvation understanding that I will hold on to my salvation. I won't let nobody take it. I do what God has called me to do. And then I will stand with the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Not rattled. Not nothing else. But I will hold on to your word, your unchanging hand, understanding that God says to be alert. Just keep on praying. Keep seeking my face. Don't be fearful of anything, for God is making a way. Oh, it's time to battle. It's time to hold on to God's hand. Oh, it's time to speak truth to power. It's time to hold on to God. Don't get rattled now, but keep on moving forth. Keep on pressing your way, for God will make a way. Oh, it's battle time. Understand that all you got to do is just stand. Stand on his word. Stand in his word. Trust in him. Hold on to his unchanging hand. For God is a God who loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son. Oh, you have had some battles in your life. And some battles it seems as though it's whooping you endless. But God is saying that Allow him to fight your battles, for he does fight battles for us. But he does require that we stand. The word also tells us this. No matter how broken we are, no matter how many things we felt like we've been defeated in, God is saying there's always victory in him. He says, if you come to me, if you confess with your mouth that everything you've done in the past I'm sorry for it. against you, O oh God. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died for your sins and you want to give your life to him, all you need to do is say, Lord, take my hand, take my heart, take my mind and begin a new work in me. Turn my whole heart around. O oh God, I'm so tired of losing in everything that I'm doing. Because the word says this, come to me all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you peace. But most of all, he wants to give you salvation. And salvation only comes through him. This is your opportunity that you may give your life to him. And if you've done that, I encourage you to give us a call here at Lomax Temple. Because you can be a virtual member. Because we can have people calling you. Calling and praying with you. Praying with for you. Don't miss the opportunity when you can come together in prayer. Some folks will try to say you don't need folks to pray with you. But the word of God tells us that there were two or three are gathered. 
He's right there in the midst. And I desire God to be in the midst of all his people. And right now that we're coming together and God is in the midst of our peop his people right now at this current time. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't say I do it when later on today. Don't say I do it next week. But God is encouraging you. He says, I've been knocking on your heart for a long time. And all you have to do now is just say yes to me. This is your opportunity to say yes to a God who's been looking for you, searching for you. But he wants your heart and your mind. And all you have to do is say yes at this current time. Confess with your mouth. I'm sorry. Lord, give, I give you my heart to you now and give us a call because we want to pray with you. The word of God for his people. Thanks be to God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Beloved, we have come to an awesome part of the service where we can commune with our Father. But before we do that, we know that, that Christ came to save us. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation, atonement sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and harmony with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take the holy sacraments to your comfort and devotely kneeling, make your humble confession to the almighty God. As we do the prayer of confession to collect all together, almighty God, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and to whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. We do not presume to come to this holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat of the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and the drink of his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may ever more dwell in him, in he, in us. Amen. At this time, if you have your sacrament with you, it has already been consecrated and set apart. And the top part has a clear foil, which has the element of the bread that's on it. You have to slightly peel that back to get to the bread itself. You'll slide that out, which represents the Lord and his body, which is broken for you on Calvary. Take, break, and eat. And be thankful. Thank you, Lord. The other part has a partition that is purple. You have to lift that up to get to the juice. This represents the blood that was shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take and drink and be truly thankful for what he's done in our lives. Lord, we thank you Lord, we bless you, and may Lord continue to shine his face upon you for all that he's done. We thank him, God, for laying his life down for us. May the God continue to bless and to keep you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. We have come to an awesome part of the service in which you can participate in. I want to express appreciation for your faithfulness as many of you have continued to give your tithes and your offering. People are still in need during this season. And you have this opportunity to bless and help our communities at this time. To, de to designate your offering to help the families that are impacted by coronavirus, simply um, put on their Corona-19 in your offering. Again, we thank you for your continuous support, your prayers, and your financial provision as we continue to embark on the work of ministry. You can give through the following means. Zelle, Givelify, PayPal's, or you can mail your checks right here to our office at 17441 DeQuinter Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48212. And if you have questions, please give us a call at 313-893-1463. My prayer is that you continue to fight the good fight, trusting in the Lord. We thank you for joining us this week for our online worship service. We invite you to our other weekly online services. On Tuesday at 6.30, we have our virtual Zoom workout. And on Wednesday, we have intercessory prayer that begins at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can call that number 712-775-7300 with an access code of 392-357-POUND. And Wednesday, we have Bible study at noon and 6 p.m. You can simply go to our website, which is lomaxtemple.org, and click on Bible study at the bottom of the page. And on Fridays at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have virtual hustle classes. And finally, we invite you to like our Facebook page and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining us for worship. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds centered in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. Amen. And God bless you.